Lucy. And today we are going to feature a product from our favorite pet store, Pet Grocer in Alliston. And that product is Welly Chef. And they make this incredible homemade dog food done right base mix. I know, doesn't it smell good, Lucy? Um, the great thing about this base mix is that if you want to cook for your dog at home, but you're worried about how am I going to make sure I'm feeding a balanced recipe and how am I going to know that my dog is getting all the right nutrients over time and, um, and make this easy so I don't have to go rummaging through tons and tons of scientific data and recipes. Well, a chef has taken fantastic vegetables and fruits and dehydrated them, mixed them with some quinoa and chia, as well as microalgae and kelp, and made this incredible dry base mix. So you take your measurements of base mix and you mix it with the protein of your choice, which is fantastic because now you can choose meats and fishes and eggs that your pet loves and you can cook them in your home and find the best prices and cook them as you need them, which is great. And your vet will love that this product creates an AFCO balanced meal. So remember that, that is fantastic. And the simplicity of this is wonderful. When you purchase your Welly Mix, you're going to have this recipe booklet that comes in the back and inside there's 15 recipes of various proteins um, that include meats like beef and turkey and chicken as well as eggs and fishes. And uh, inside it'll tell you how much of each protein to get to make your recipe. Um, and then we also love to use the instructions that Pet Grocer provides that make cooking and preparing your recipe even easier if that is even possible. It's going to be great. So today we're going to show you how to make Welly Chef to serve raw, cooked on top of the stove, or baked in the oven. So there's a few different ways you can do this. And to get yourself started, you're going to want to gather a few kitchen basics. Those basics are going to include a mixing bowl, a spoon and a spatula. You want some measuring cups for both dry and wet ingredients. Uh, and you're going to want uh, water on hand as well. Now that you have your kitchen basics, there's one other item that you'll want to grab, and that is a food scale. This is gonna be super helpful while we're making our Welly Chef, as well as when we're portioning it out for meal times. And you can find that at your hardware store. Um, sometimes your super supermarket may carry it and you can definitely find them online. So the first thing I'm going to do is take my mixing bowl and I'm gonna put it on my scale and get my dry mix. And this recipe for the ground beef and Welly Chef meal. Wanna give that a smell, Lucy? Mm, it kind of, it smells as if you were to go to your health food store and pick up a vegetable soup mix. That's what this smells like. Like you could eat it yourself. It smells really lovely. Um, and we are going to measure out for this recipe 5.9 ounces of Welly Chef base mix. I'm just going to add that to my bowl. And 5.9 ounces is almost a cup approximately. Okay, there we go. And just a little sprinkling more and 5.9, perfect. And I can put this aside now. And then we're going to take water. Uh, and this recipe is calling for 7.4 ounces of water. I think you'll wanna stay for the meat, Lucy. Here. She's very excited about the meat portion of this recipe. Okay, so we're going to measure out our water. There we go. And you're just gonna add that to the dry mix and give it a quick stir. And then we're gonna set this aside and let it rehydrate for just a little bit while we get our meat sorted out. Great, now I already have a 12 ounce portion, which is required for this recipe of ground beef. The great thing about Welly Chef, like I said earlier, is that you can source out your own meats. When sourcing out meats, I recommend you source out the highest quality, best welfare meat that you can buy on your budget, which is great. If you find great meat on sale, you can stock up, put it in your freezer and defrost it as needed and make your Welly Chef as your family needs it. 
and uh, this meat we actually got at Pet Grocer. They have a fantastic product from Bennington Farms and it is not only a grass-fed ground beef, it's from a regenerative farm and we just love the practices uh, that that entails and we love supporting small local farmers. So I'm excited to have this. It's a fantastic, fantastic beef, not just for your dog, for your people as well. I cannot tell you the rave reviews on my meatballs and burgers when I use this meat. So I recommend you pop in and grab some for yourself. So we've allowed about um, five minutes. <laughs> or less, Lucy says. Um, for this <laughs> to rehydrate, Lucy, we're gonna add the 12 ounces of beef. Now, is the beef good? She says it passes inspection, which is fantastic. So we're gonna add the beef to the welly mix, just like that. And then all we have to do is stir it in. So do you wanna keep an eye on this, Lucy, while I stir it? Okay, so it's gonna be the consistency of, say, meatballs. Um, or a slightly wet burger mix. So you don't want it to be too, too wet. If you find it's a little bit dry and you wanna add a touch of water, you can just add a splash, just a bit to get it moving. And you can also get in there with your hands, which I'm just about to do. So I'll put that there. Just gonna mix this with my hands so that I get all the meat and the welly mix. You'll see it's this kind of loose but it still holds together. I just want to make sure those chunks of ground beef are evenly distributed. It doesn't have to be perfect um, but you want each bite to be as balanced as possible. Right Lucy? Okay now at this stage in the process if you're feeding your dog raw you're done. It was that easy. Meat mix water and this can make a meal. Um, I recommend portioning up into um, pre-sized containers, and then you can just grab it as you need it, and that's it. So the next step, when you're working with raw meat, treat it the same way you would if you were cooking for the family. Keep your hands and surfaces clean, so I'm just gonna give my hands a quick wash. So now let's talk about how we would cook this if we're serving a gently home-cooked diet. So I'm going to show you the oven-baked steps now. So you've got your pre-mix all sorted out with your meat. Grab a baking dish of your choice. Um, you can use a loaf pan. You could also grab a muffin tin like this. You don't have to use silicone. I really like silicone because it's so easy to pop these out once they're cooked. If you're using a metal tin, you'll definitely want to just kind of score around the edges once it comes out of the oven to pop them out, or you could use the little paper muffin liners and that'll help them pop out. They're wonderful portions, so it makes it easy to pick and choose how many you need to make a meal for your dog. Um, <laughs> and they're easy to store like this as well. So let's just see the next step here. I'll just grab my spoon from earlier, and I'm just going to portion up the welly mix with beef. I'm just gonna put a scoop in each little tin just like that super simple okay and one thing I, I do like about welly chef Lucy is a fresh fed dog she usually eats a raw diet um, and we tend to buy it pre-made I find that convenient um, but sometimes it's nice to switch it up or if I find a great deal on meat and I want to share the wealth with Lucy um, we'll do this it's also fantastic for traveling so if we're hitting the road as a family and we don't want to take up all the freezer space of traveling with pre-made raw we can pick up a bag of welly chef and throw it in the car and then when we get to our destination we can grab the meats that we need. We can pick up some ground turkey, some ground beef, some eggs, fishes, and we can make our necessary dog meals right there on site. I might bring my food scale with me, but other than that, um, if you're renting a place that has a kitchen, generally, like I said, kitchen basics, you don't need a lot of fancy stuff. No! Happen, right? And Lucy likes it no matter what shape it's in. So muffin tins, loaf tins, or cake pans, it's all good. So I'm just going to finish this up here. 
Now I recommend that you just gently push down the meat. If you want to help me push that down, Lucy, that will be great. Just push it down so that each of the cups is even and they cook nice and evenly. It'll also make the shape nice and consistent so when you're packaging them up, um, they stack really nicely. If you're using a loaf pan or other shape pan, I would do the same. Just make sure it hits all the edges and then you're good. So the next thing you're going to do with this filled muffin tray or a baking pan is put it into a 350 degree oven. That's 350 Fahrenheit. And you wanna cook it for about 20 to 30 minutes. A muffin pan this size should finish up in about 20 minutes. If I was doing a deeper loaf pan, it might wanna run about 30 minutes. Use your best judgment. I'm gonna set the timer for 20, give these guys a quick peek. And if they need longer, I'll leave them in for a few more minutes. And that is as simple as the oven cooking goes. Once they're finished, I'm gonna take them out of the oven, let them cool. You'll often see juices bubbling um, around the meat, so you don't wanna pop them out of the pan until they cool. As they cool, they're gonna suck up all those delicious juices back into the little meat patties, um, which is important. There's a lot of nutrition and hydration in that, so let them suck up the juices, cool in the pan, and you can pop them out when it's cool enough to touch. So I'm gonna put these aside. And I also want to show you how you would do this on the stove top. So I have my dry premix already hydrated here in the bowl. I'm just gonna loosen it up a bit because it's been sitting for a little while. Lucy, keep an eye on that for me. And then I'm gonna grab my frying pan, which earlier I was able to uh, saute up some ground beef. All I did was crumble it up in the pan. Uh, if you find that meat is sticking to your pan, don't add oil if you can help it. Just add a splash of water, loosen it up, and you can deglaze the pan with that. Um, there's no need to add extra fats. Um, you can easily loosen this up with water and that's enough. Now I'm gonna grab a spatula because I wanna make sure to get all of the delicious meat juices out of the pan. Lucy is very, very interested in the ground beef. Scrape the edges. There we go. Oh, it smells so good. I'm craving tacos now. All right, so my pan is clean and I have gotten my premix and my meat all together and we're gonna stir these up, all the meat juices and the rehydrated Welly Chef mix. Let's make sure it's nicely dispersed. Let's cut it up a bit with your spatula. And then this is now finished. So you can again, grab your scale, put your dog's dish on it, portion out what you need, grab your containers if you're pre-portioning it to put in the fridge or the freezer, and this meal is done. Again, super simple, super easy. It was one bowl and one pan. And so this is ready. Lucy, we have a little quality control check on the skillet fried. Again, a winner. So this is good. <laughs> Awesome. So this is super handy, easy to scoop and spoon. You could keep it in a single container and just scoop it as you need it, or you can pre-portion it. Whatever is easiest for your family, do that. Now, if you have baked your Welly Chef, I've got a baked pan that I did earlier today, put in a little brownie pan, uh, and I'll show you how we sort this out. So I recommend grabbing either saving your doggy, doggy bag containers from the restaurants. These are fantastic for portioning. So we like to have these on hand. You can also just grab an inexpensive stack of plasticware that are all the same size and you can portion up your dog food. I like that because you can grab as many as you need for a few meals, defrost them in the fridge as needed, and then they're ready to serve and easy to go. So let me show you how to portion this up. So this size pan, I'm gonna cut into uh, nine squares. So I'm just gonna score the meat. I'm gonna cut the, the edges and just loosen those up a little bit. Do three cuts here, nice. And another three cuts here, so I kind of have a meat brownie thing <laughs> size-wise going on. 
All right, and don't worry if they're not all the same size. Um, that's what the scale is for. So if I were portioning this out for Lucy right now, I would get my scale ready. Lucy loves to eat on a mine platter. She found that on bowls, her food would get stuck on the edges and it kind of drove her crazy. So we got her this mine platter, which is fantastic. It's got all these little dimples and divots so it catches juices and broths and meat runoff and all that yumminess. Um, and it gets her tongue all excited to lick these areas. It also has a trough around the edges. Again, it catches all those juices and meat gets stuck in there and she has to kind of forage and work for it which is really good stimulation for both her mouth um, as well as her mind. So that's great. So I'm going to set my scale and Lucy, oh, let's get this working here. I know we're about ready to, to get this going, honey. Lucy gets um, approximately eight ounces of food for each of her meals and she eats twice a day. Now the directions that Pet Grocer provides for cooking your Welly Chef <laughs> also include how much to give your dog and it's based on weight. So you can follow that. Um, Lucy is kind of between 30 and 35 pounds. Um, the chart says she should be getting approximately 12 ounces. Um, we know that based on her metabolism, she tends to eat a little bit more than the regular charts usually recommend. So watch your dog if they need a little bit more or a little bit less based on their overall body um, physique adjusted as necessary. So I'm, I'm gonna measure an eight ounce portion for Lucy. If she can keep her snout off of it, we'll be able to get this done pretty quickly. Let's see, it's four and a half, seven and a half, and I'm gonna to top it up with 8.2. Just break this off, balance it out, and there we go. That's a meal for Lucy. And then, for Lucy's purposes, I like to break it up. She likes her meat small. If you've got a dog who doesn't care, skip this step entirely. But I'm gonna break it up for her because that's the way she prefers to eat. And then that is one meal for Lucy. So I would do that twice a day. It's super easy. Now when portioning up my meal, I'm gonna let Lucy enjoy this. I would take my takeaway containers and again, use my scale. And I would portion out either eight ounce or one pound um, servings for Lucy because that's what she eats either for one meal or for two meals in a day. So I would know that my container is either a one or two serving depending on what size I was using. If your dog eats less, portion at whatever amount works for your dog. And it's that simple. Put these in the fridge for about two to three days or in the freezer and you can keep them in there um, nice and fresh and thaw in the refrigerator as you need them. Um, and that's the simplicity of Welly Chef. So it's a fantastic product again because you can source out your own meats. It's completely AFCO balanced. Your vet is going to love that. You do not have to worry about whether or not your dog is getting the right nutrition. Just follow the recipe and there's, like I said, 15 different ones in there so you can change it up. We highly recommend um, a rotational diet. That's what Lucy does. So she'll have beef for a while and we'll switch off to turkey or chicken. We'll add fish in there as well. Um, rotation is wonderful. Just like us, we wouldn't want to eat the same burgers every day. So switch it up for your dog. And that's all. If you have any further questions about where to buy Welly Chef or uh, how to use Welly Chef, please visit www.petgrocer.ca and you can visit their online store and their blog for all the information. You can also follow the QR code on your screen and it'll take you directly to the information on how to cook and how to purchase your Welly Chef dinner. So that's all from Lucy and I. Happy cooking. <laughs> <laughs> Lucy, thanks you for joining us today. Bye.